Hi, uh, today I'm going to show you a workflow for reverse engineering a prismatic part in VX model with transfer to SOLIDWORKS. So here I have an STL that's been in, imported into VX model. So the first thing we need to do is we need to align the STL or the mesh to a coordinate system. We're going to use some of the advanced selection tools along with uh, entity extraction. So we're going to extract a plane using the flood fill by similar normal tool. So we click a seed facet and it fills out to all of the flat surfaces. Go create. We're also going to do one on the bottom surface here. Now here we want to constrain this to be perpendicular to the first plane that we selected. So we have orientation constraints. So I'm going to select perpendicular and select the first plane. Go create. Then we need uh, a center for our origin. So what we're going to do is extract a circle from this opening. So circles uh, and any 2D geometry needs to be projected to a plane. So first thing I need to do is select the plane. And the software automatically changes the selection to the default selection for a circle, which is similar curvature. So it extends from my seed facet to all the ones of similar curvature. You can see the selection is filled around. We go create. So now we have under entities, two planes and a circle. This is all we need to align this to a coordinate system. So I'm going to use the align to origin. And then first I'm going to select plane one and designate or constrain that to the X, Y plane of the coordinate system. Then I'm going to select circle, call this the X, Y origin. And finally plane two, my base plane, and we'll call that the XZ plane. All right, from here, we need to extract the geometry to do uh, extrusions in this case. So I'm going to extrude this main body. Then I'm going to revolve cut the center out of it and then extract circles and do an extruded uh, uh, cut uh, with those. So the first thing we need to know is uh, the, where the back surface is. So we're going to create another plane here as an extrusion target. And we're going to make sure to lock a parallel orientation to the first plane we selected. So as far as uh, geometry we can extract, we support things like circles, slots, and rectangles, but we can also do more free form type extractions. And I'll start with that, which is a cross section. So this will extract the cross section or the intersection curve from any plane that we select with the mesh. So you see uh, here, I'll offset it into the part and then it's extracting a spline. And I'll create that. can also extract the 2D sketch geometry like a slot. I can constrain orientation. I want a slot that is long axis is oriented to the Y axis. And then I make a selection using the flood fill to similar curvature tool. And that did a really good job. We're going to create that. Then below here, I have a rectangular shape with a number of fillets. If we ignore the fillets, I'll extract a rectangle. We can increase our selection tolerance. In this case, we didn't fill all the way around the circle, so we can just actively drag or click this up and then it properly fills around. Now we can transfer all these entities to our three options, SolidWorks, Inventor, or Solid Edge. I'm going to do SolidWorks right now. So you see here we have all of our geometry. We have this uh, on the wrong plane, but that's fine. That's not going to cause us an issue. And uh, uh, what I like to do is just, uh, hide the cross section and I like to create a new sketch and project the geometry into the new sketch.
So now the only thing we need is the geometry of the spore, which we forgot to get earlier, but that we can do another cross section for that. As long as we still have SOLIDWORKS open, we can transfer any additional selected entity. So here we see the additional cross section came in. So once we have the modeling complete, then we can save this as a step file. I'll hide my entities. Then we can import the step file back in as a CAD model into VX model. And you see an overlay of the CAD with the mesh geometry. Then if we hide the CAD model, go back to the mesh, we can do a comparison to the CAD model. Everything here is plus minus 0.1 millimeter. So if we want to tighten that up, all the green will be plus minus 50 microns. So here we can look and decide if we want to go make a slight adjustment or if the geometry is acceptable uh, the way it is.